Um, I chose a Glen of Amal because I'm really interested in native Irish breeds in general, as they are in Ireland, and the member of the Irish Kennel Club, and they know that it's part of their culture, that's the national heritage thing, and that I really like the idea of understanding purebred dogs as purpose-bred dogs and that history that goes behind them. So Glens were a little-known breed, and they're very old-fashioned, very unchanged, very charming, and uh, they charmed me, and I was smitten. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a, you know, um, a big myth of uh, that I believe that it's a myth is that Glen of Amal Terriers are turn spit dogs, which was a labor-saving device to cook big, huge cuts of meat in front of an open fire. But the Glen of Amal is a very small, secluded area in Ireland, which is already an island. And back at the time of this, dogs weren't traveling all around, especially scruffy farm dogs like this. And they're the only dwarf dog in Ireland. So those genes came from somewhere. They probably came back from when Queen Elizabeth was, um, she sent French mercenaries over to try and root root the Irish out. (laughs) And so uh, I don't think that they turned the spit, but I do think that they were used to help extract badgers from their badger den and go through hedgerows to do that Mm -hmm. because in ireland the badgers would be competitive with the food supply you know it's just an all-arounder dog an old-fashioned all-arounder dog well the good qualities i like is they're very intelligent and communicative and hilarious the bad qualities is they're hilarious because they know how to exasperate you and mock you (laughs) and tease you they're very powerful very very powerful and they're very opinionated so uh it's really engaging to have them around but they can be very challenging Uh, to me a lot of ways are more kind of like people than a lot of the dogs are so it comes with the good and bad they Mm. the mistake people make is because they look like you know scruffy little stuffed animals and people say they're not as intense as the other terriers they're not as intense as other as other terriers and being terrier like and that's because there actually aren't that much terrier in them they're all around her dog Mm -hmm. and uh so that's the good and bad are actually the same thing so they're the perfect dog for some people and they are the ex you know uh, extremely challenging Mm -hmm. difficult dog for some people well, now it's all over the place because of the internet. So people are thinking that it's what they want. But the people that I'm looking for in particular is I'm a preservation breeder. And um, so the idea of preserving a breed and some of these old fashioned characteristics is not something I can do by myself. So I uh, would say that sometimes people seek lens at dog shows, but my favorite um, owners kind of, found out about Glenn's by seeing them at an Irish festival. Mm -hmm. They're the perfect owners to me. Like they love all things Irish (laughs) and they, if you love Irish things and you're used to like teasing and mock or, you know, like the good with the bad that goes along and they look Irish. They have the expressive eyebrows. Mm -hmm. I have this thing, a picture of Colin Farrell with and without eyebrows. So Mm -hmm. you can see, you know, eyebrows to Irish are very important in terms of giving facial expression and the glens are no exception i become more interested in the livestock breeding dogs in general uh so i have a kuvas puppy so oh wow so i just this year got one and so i did become very interested in livestock guarding breeds and so i was asked this question two years ago and my answer was a kuvas and i said that a hungarian uh livestock guarding breed was I was very interested in them because not only do they still work to this day, is we've not ever managed to find a man or a machine that can do the job better than a Kuvaz can. So I would say probably looking into those livestock guarding breeds because they do it in different ways. Some of them are sort of nanny breeders. Some of them are territory. They cover this. They look at the sky, how they keep predators away that these dogs are really um you know 
that job that they were bred for to use their judgment and things like that make them really interesting and different from each other. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. they're the, like Glenn's in being very intelligent and old, you know, very true to their original purpose and not a dog for everyone but not as intense the way that a lot of the herding dogs are in terms of their activity level mm -hmm. but a truly a challenging kind of dog unless you're interested in behavior and reading behaviors and things like that so yeah absolutely well i i guess that i just like to say that the in the support of purpose-bred dogs as we go forward with this is it's a big decision on who to add to your life for this amount of time our relationship with our dog lasts longer than the average marriage it does and so i support the idea in general of having people be able to choose something that's predictable rather than picking on what we like the look of so i kind of will say people come to me with glens and i'm you know they want a glen and i said yeah but you can't trust the lust it's like going to a speed date or whatever is you can't choose a breed just because you like the way that they look if you don't know what the behavior to expect that goes along with them and that's the benefit of a purpose-bred dog or a purebred dog is their behavior and size and things like that are a lot more predictable so you can have a better fit which makes people and dogs happier yeah definitely